Hi everyone, my name is Heather and I work for the Okanagan Regional Library. Today I wanted to invite you to paint along with me. We're going to be painting the starry night sky with silhouetted trees on some wooden rounds. These wooden rounds my friend Henry cut from a tree branch in his backyard. If you don't happen to have that, not a worry. You can paint this on canvas, on paper, and it will just look as beautiful. I like the wooden rounds because it gives me a bit of a challenge to paint on something like a small canvas. I'm going to go over everything I have at my workstation here. I have a piece of paper held down my masking tape just to protect my work surface. I have my paints here, black, brown, purple, dark blue, light blue, and white. I have some paint brushes, small, medium, and fine tip. These are ones I just found around my house. They're a dollar store, nothing special. And I also have a stiffer brush that I'm going to use to flick to give that spatter effect of the stars in the night sky. The stiffer the brush, the easier this will work for you. And now a painting tip is I have two pots of water here. My smaller vessel will hold most of the pigment will be my first wash. And what happens is if I get all the pigment off in the first wash, when I go to the second vessel water, I'm not going to carry that muddy water over to the next paint that I dip my paintbrushes into. Keeps it nice and clean. In my paint tray, I've ordered my paint going from the darkest to the lightest. Organization is great, but this is more just to stop if I accidentally dip my black and dripped it into my brown. It's not as big as effect as if I dipped it into the white. Just saves on some accidents. Some paper towel just to keep things clean. So I'm going to choose a wooden round and I'm just shifting it around trying to see which side I like to be at the top. It's not an exact science, it's just what your eye happens to like. So I'm going to start off with a purpley blue color and I'm going to start one quarter of the way from the bottom all the way around. I'm meaning the edge at the opposite side. So using my medium sized paintbrush, dabbing off the excess water, dipping it into the purple and the blue. And I'm using a dabbing method versus a paint stroke. I'm just trying to really saturate the paint onto the wooden round and I don't need to have perfect paint strokes. You'll see the inside edge is not perfect. This is actually going to be very helpful in blending the next color with the color that we're doing right now. All right, and when you're happy with that, I'm not gonna wash my paintbrush. I'm gonna keep a little bit of that color on as we move to the next into the light blue. I'm overlapping that messy edge with our newest color and dabbing on the lighter blue. I'm going to dab until I start to blend that all together. I'm gonna go along the bottom as if perhaps the sun just set and we still have a bit of light coming through on the horizon. Another tool that I just happen to have is a latex makeup sponge. I wet it and it just helps me blend a little bit faster. If you don't have it, you can absolutely take your paintbrush and continue to blend until you get that gradient ombre effect. So just continue dabbing until you are happy with the results. There's no rule that says you can't go back in and just fix things up after as well. So now just with light blue, I'm going to do my third layer, going close to the inside. I'm just using my makeup sponge to really dab and get that ombre effect. And almost any paint project, there will be a moment where you look at it and you say, oh no, what have I done? But if you stick with it, you will eventually get that result you are looking for. 
So now I'm going in with a clean brush and some white, just right into the center. I really want to draw the eye to the lightest point, that center point. And just dabbing it until I get a really nice light, light blue in the center. All right. So now I'm thinking about layering. And really, we want our stars to be behind our trees. So with that stiff brush, I'm just going to dip it into my white and dab some of the excess off. You will get messy, but we are washable. So holding it close, I'm going to flick. And you'll start to see those stars forming. Now, if you're worried about those streaks, please don't be. Those are lucky in this case, we have some shooting stars. All right, so I'm just going in until I'm happy with the look of it. The closer you are, the larger the stars. A little bit further, the way that your brush is, the further away it will give you smaller stars. I'm just washing my finger off so I don't transfer that paint onto my wooden round. Okay, so now for the tree trunks. I'm grabbing my finest pointed brush, just a really thin one, and I'm going to mix between mostly black and a little bit of brown. There we go. My brush was a little bit too wet, so I'm just drying it off so I don't get a blotchy effect. I'm painting in those tree trunks. Now, our eye naturally likes to find a midpoint. So doing trees in odd numbers, seven, five, three, does help your eye find that midpoint and just, it's a pleasing effect. But know that this is just a guide. You can absolutely do the whatever number of trees you enjoy. All right. So now it's time to add in our branches and our needles on the branches. For this, I'm going to use my smaller brush. I'm going to get off the excess water. And there we are. So it's a little bit too perfect for my liking because I'm hoping to stamp out the branches. So I'm beating up my paintbrush a little bit, using my finger to really push those bristles apart. I want a messy, gnarled look to my paintbrush. There we are. Perfect. So I'm going to twirl the brush when I stamp on my branches to not create a too noticeable effect or pattern. So I'm going to use my surface to dab off the excess paint. Now if you're not sure of how this was going to look, try on the outer trees first versus the middle so you get a little bit more practice those ones aren't as stand out as the one in the middle so just stamping on my branches and i'm going for a triangular effect wider at the bottom and narrowing at the top Same thing for my tree beside it. And what I really like and it's a personal preference is to be able to see that night sky through the branches. I don't really want the effect here of a solid tree silhouette. Same technique on the other side. Now these trees are going to overlap a bit, and that's absolutely fine. If they were this close in nature, the trees would touch and overlap, so don't worry about them touching one another. And I'm just using my trunk as a guide as I go to my tallest tree that's seen some windy days.
there we are. Now I want to add a moon to my night sky. So using my sponge, I'm going to paint on a full moon onto the sponge. The sponge texture, when I press it down, will give me a bit of a crater effect. If you don't happen to have a sponge, no worries, you can still paint it on with a paintbrush. So now just deciding where my moon is going to live. And right about there. Just push on a little bit harder. And there we go. So not quite a full moon. It's in a moon phase. And that's just fine. So this one, I made a mistake and I added that white border to cover it up, but I really like the effect. So I think I'm going to add that to my current painting as well, that white border. So dipping my paint brush into the paint and getting it really saturated. I'm going to do short strokes and match them up. I'm going to stop there because I noticed that my paint has got a bit watered down. So I'm going to add more just so I don't get that paint bleeding right into the rest of my painting. Short strokes just makes it easier to control. As soon as I see my paint starting to have a trail off effect versus a solid white line, is when I'm going back in to re-dip. Alright, just joining the lines around my painting to create a border. There we are. So there is our night sky painted on a wooden round. I really would love to see what you created. You can tag us with the hashtag ORLReads and I'd be able to find it. But if you could give this video a like, it really does help us out and let us know that you're enjoying what we're creating here today. So I hope you enjoyed yourself and thank you for joining me at the library today. Bye!